Hello ladies and gents and welcome to another repair video. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. This is going to be a voiceover and or I've laid out my cameras a little bit different. So let me know what you think of this format in the comments down below. I would really appreciate it. So this is a Nintendo Switch which we're working on right now. And this has been sent in because it's got no power. So as you can see when I plug in the charger, it attempts to charge but it charges at 0.14 amps with nothing at all on the screen. So we need to take it apart and we need to take a look. So while I'm taking this apart on the video, I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe if you're new to the channel and turn on the bell notifications so that you're notified whenever I release a video. And if you find these videos useful, you can head over to Twitch and you can link your Amazon Prime account to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber, which is absolutely free for you to do if you're a Prime customer. But it gives me around about $2.50 every month. It really does help out the channel. So we'll fast forward through this bit and we'll get inside the console. So the first thing we want to do when we get inside the console is number one, we need to make sure that the battery is disconnected, which I'll do so in a second. But we're also going to check a capacitor just below M92T36. And as you can see here, we're getting some weird readings. So I went into Ohm's mode and I was Initially getting a reading of around about 114 ohms, but then for some reason it weirdly jumped up to 3.3 thousand ohms, which is very strange. So I thought that was strange to start with. Something wasn't right. So moving on, what I need to do next is take apart the rest of the console. So that means taking all of the screws out, taking the game card reader out, taking the heatsink off and all of the ribbons being disconnected. And as you can see from the charger, it looks like someone's got a little bit hungry and decided to have a midnight feast. So it's pretty rough inside there. It doesn't look good at all. So the first thing we need to do is remove the port. And the way that I do these is to heat up from the bottom. As you can see, my hot air is at the bottom. And I'll leave it around about 30 seconds before eventually going to lift the port off. That's at 480 degrees Celsius at 40% airflow with no nozzle on the atom and basically once that's done it means I can lift it off safely and not damage any traces no need for low melt solar no need for leaded solar talking of leaded solar the next thing to do is to add leaded solder just to lower the melting temperature on the ground legs and also on the USB-C port pads as well the reason we do this is because we want to clear away those ground legs and by adding leaded solder it's going to lower the melting temperature and allow us to wick away a lot safer and a lot easier than it would with lead free solder so once we've flooded the area with solder we can get some hot air and if we just use hot air in conjunction with the soldering iron we can just make sure that all of the leaded solder has worked its way through then we'll come in with some solder braid and we'll wick away this solder if you do have difficulty, there are a few methods that you can use to attempt to sort that. So we we'll just clean it up, get rid of that burnt flux, and then you can use a solder sucker, which as you'll see here, I kind of struggled with. The problem is the Nintendo Switch board is rather small and it just flies around everywhere. So we flip the board around, add some flux, and then just wick away with hot air, wick, and the soldering iron. Once that's done, we can tin the pads again. So make sure that there's enough solder on all of those pads. And then we can take a brand spanking new port. I'll buy these in bulk, but you can also buy them off AliExpress and eBay in singles. They cost me around about 50 pence per port, but I buy them in packs of 50. So we'll heat up from the bottom again and flow it on. Making sure that it's nice and solid. And then we can solder the ground legs from the top. Just make sure that enough solder gets all the way through. And then touch up all of these pins. I like to use the same tip. I'm too lazy to change it, to be honest. But you might want to use a small tip for touching up the pins. But just make sure that you've got enough solder on the pins and also on the ground legs as well. We'll just clean it up there using isopropyl alcohol and a little brush and also a cotton swab as well. 
Just make sure that it's all nice and clean. There's no flux anywhere. And enjoy the remaining isopropyl alcohol with warm air. Next, we give it the nudge test. That's to make sure that all of the pins are solid and make sure that none of them are loose. This just makes sure that the port itself is soldered nice and solid and that we're not going to have any problems. Next up, we're going to take the multimeter and what we're going to do is we're going to go back into continuity mode. So that's just to make sure that there's no bridges underneath the port. So we just test each pin from one to the next and also test the fuse as well. Moving on to M92 T36, we want to check in continuity mode on these capacitors. Just make sure that we've got no shorts around here. And unfortunately, we had a short on this capacitor right here. And that means that we've either got an issue with M92 T36, or we've got an issue with P13 USB, which is on the back of the board, just above the port. So we'll test this capacitor here. And as you can see, that is shorted. So that can mean one of two things. It can mean that P13 USB is damaged or it's got a bad CPU. Uh, what I didn't realize here when I first removed the chip is that the pad on the far left bottom side, or rather second from the left, connected to one of the filters is actually damaged. Um, when I lifted the chip off, it did take the pad with it. That is a common thing to happen when we get damage to P13. Too much heat goes through that particular line and it takes out the trace with it. So as you can see, we just remove this. We'll just clean it up there so we can actually get to the pads and just straighten that pad back out. Like I said, it is a common thing that happens when we get damage on the port. One of those traces will end up blowing and unfortunately, as you can see from this, it didn't blow quick enough. So what's happened here is there's too much voltage gone through the data lines. It's took out that trace because they are really weak traces, but it's also took out the CPU. Just to confirm, I do remove the capacitor just to make sure it doesn't take out the capacitor. Test again. And what do you know? Bad news. Well, I guess that's the end of that one then. Um, <laughs> this board has a dead CPU, unfortunately. So after all of the diagnostic process, changing the USB-C port and then diagnosing the P13 USB circuit, I've concluded that this is a dead CPU. And unfortunately, what's likely happened here is that 15 volts has gone straight to the CPU. And the reason for that is purely because the USB-C port has been damaged and then someone's tried to plug it in afterwards. Now, obviously, I know that I tried to plug it in, but I do know firsthand that someone else had tried to plug it in before me because I was told. So anything that I did was obviously, you know, the damage was already done and things like that. But uh, unfortunately, it is what it is. This one can't be saved. The only way to fix this is to replace the CPU, the NAND and the, uh, I think it's the anti-piracy IC. So it's this little SOC on the back here. Not financially viable, takes too long. It means reboiling two chips plus swapping that chip over as well. Uh, well, that's modular. I mean, you can change that, no problem. But it means reboiling two chips, and obviously that's not viable. And then, even still, you need a board with a working CPU. So it's not viable to remove the CPU and put it onto another board. And uh, the only viable thing now is to do a board swap. So let me know what you think of this format. Obviously, most of this is going to be a voiceover. And the way that I've got the video laid out at the minute is I've got all of my cameras on one screen. And that way, then I can just flick instantly over to a new scene without having to stop talking, without having to break the flow and things like that. And then just do a voiceover afterwards. And hopefully it turns out all right once the video is completely edited. So let me know what you think about this video format. I would really love to hear your opinions. 
And if you are new to the channel, then be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications. That way you don't miss any future videos. If you enjoyed the video, remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. I don't mind if people give it a thumbs down, as long as they tell me why they disliked it in the comments. So if you tell me why you disliked it, then maybe I can do something to change it. If you don't, then unfortunately it'll probably stay pretty much as it is. So yeah, that's just the way it is. If you enjoy what I do and you find these videos useful, you can of course support me by becoming a Patreon supporter using the link in the video description. You can become a channel member using the join button just below the video. It's conveniently placed just by the subscribe button. So press them both at the same time if you really want to. And you can also donate directly through PayPal. There's a PayPal link in the video description as well. Or you can become a Twitch subscriber. So basically Twitch has a subscription service where users can decide to pledge a little bit of money each month to subscribe. But if you've got Amazon Prime, then you can link that to Twitch because they're both owned by the same company. And then you can just do it for free. It gives me $2.50 every month, but it don't cost you a penny. But that's going to be for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.